T minus, minus 50. 50 seconds. Minus 45. Second stage LH2 secure. Right Launch level. enable, enable. GE main power off. Main power off. Minus 30. Green board. Minus 25. Flight lock in. SRM TVC blow down. Minus Night 15. is armed. Roll for ignition. T minus 10. Nine. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. We have ignition of the main engine. And we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV rocket carrying GPS 2F2 for the United States Air Force. The global positioning system provides positioning, navigation, and timing service for military and civilian us users worldwide. 25 seconds in, good engine control. Chamber pressure is now beginning to, to decline in the solid rocket motors as expected. Holding very well on the main. Good pitch and your control in the main engine. Passing 38 seconds. And you're hearing the voice of Steve Agate providing launch vehicle ascent data. Coming up data. 46 seconds, mark 46 seconds, Mach 1. Vehicle now going transonic. 50 seconds in. Still looking good. Altitude now passing 5.5 nautical miles. 59 seconds in. Max 2, maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute, five seconds in. Less than 30 seconds remain now on solid rocket motor burn. Good control. One minute, 17 seconds in. Expect burnout in about 10 seconds. Now passing one minute, 28 seconds. Standing by for burnout. And we have burnout. Standing by for separation. And we have separation, separation of both solid rocket motors. Good separation, one minute, 46 seconds in. Now passing one minute, 50 seconds. One minute, 54 seconds. The Delta IV vehicle now only weighs one half of what it did at launch some two minutes ago, burning propellant at the rate of 1,840 pounds per second. Passing two minutes, five seconds into the flight. This is Delta Mission Control now, at L plus 2 minutes and 10 seconds into the Delta IV GPS 2F2 mission. And we just heard Steve Agad confirm several of the early mission milestones. He confirmed jettison of the two solid rocket motors. And at this point, the mission continues nominally. Our next event is main engine cutoff, or MECO, and that's scheduled to take place uh, a little less than two minutes from now. Let's go back to Steve Agad. Two minutes, 40 seconds, now passing Mach 7. Altitude now 40.5 nautical miles, velocity 9,080 feet per second, downrange distance 74.5 nautical miles. Three minutes into the flight. About uh, one minute remains now on uh, first stage flight. Good uh, main engine chamber pressure continuing to hold very well. Very good control, pitch and yaw on the main engine. Now passing three minutes, 25 seconds, altitude now 53.7 nautical miles, velocity 12,695 feet per second, downrange distance 129 nautical miles. Passing three minutes, 35 seconds in. About 30 seconds now remaining until main engine cutoff. Passing three minutes, 47 seconds in. Standing by to go to partial thrust mode. And we've had partial thrust command. And we can see going down to partial thrust mode in the main engine. Standing by for Miko.
We have Miko standing by for one, two, sep. And we have separation. Standing by, and we have Ned Speed. Ned is uh, deploying into place, and we're standing by for Igniter Spark. And we have Igniter Spark standing by for ignition, and we have ignition. Ignition on the second stage. Second stage chamber pressure beginning to build. Good chamber pressure on the second stage. Standing by for fairing SEP, and we have fairing SEP. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. This is Delta Mission Control at L plus four minutes, 52 seconds. We just heard Steve Agat report the successful ex execution of the events comprising the early part of this morning's mission. We are now in the first of two planned second stage engine burns, and the mission continues nominally. This burn will last approximately seven minutes, 45 seconds. And I'm now joined by Captain Ryan Finley from the Air Force's Global Positioning Systems Directorate. And Captain Finley, thanks very much for getting up early or staying up late this morning for this launch. Thanks, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here for the launch of 2F2. Now, Captain, launches are always exciting and, and the culmination of many years of hard work. Uh, but this morning's launch, uh, this morning's launch was no exception. But uh, really isn't the launch just the beginning for the GPS team? That's right. Launches are exciting, but there's still a lot of work to be accomplished. Right now, there is an on-over ops, uh, or sorry, on-over operations team at Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado uh, just uh, preparing to take control of the satellite. The on-over operations team consists of the 50th Space Wing, 2nd and 19th Space Operations Squadrons, the GPS Directorate, Aerospace, and Boeing. Once the satellite separates from the rocket, approximately three and a half hours from now, it's spinning at a rate of five rotations per minute and drifting westward at a rate of five and a half degrees per day. At that time, the on-orbit ops team will configure the satellite for jet control, command the satellite to despin, deploy the solar arrays, and align itself to point at the Earth. 